Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center here on the campus of Southern Nazarene University. Senior day here in Bethany. Got started off on the right foot as the Crimson Storm women, women punched their four seed ticket to Bartlesville with a 64-49 win over Arkansas Monticello. And here in the afternoon session of our doubleheader today, the Crimson Storm taking on the Weevils of Arkansas Monticello in what should be a fantastic matchup to close the regular season. The Crimson Storm have already clinched the one seed and at least a share of the regular season title. A win today gives them the outright title or a loss from Southeastern would also give the Crimson Storm the outright conference title today as the Crimson Storm come in a game ahead of Southeastern. 16 and five overall in conference play, Southeastern at 15 and six. The Crimson Storm are locked into playing Washita Baptist for in the first round on uh, Thursday night in Bartlesville. So once again, it will be the Tigers and the Crimson Storm in the first round. And I, again, I have assurances from the conference office read that that is not contractually obligated. That's just how it has worked out the past several years. Both teams out there warming up right now and read SNU with a nice bounce back win over Southern Arkansas getting revenge for the loss in Magnolia earlier this season. And they will face a very tough Arkansas Monticello team looking to knock off the Crimson Storm and spoil the festivities here today. Yeah, SNU has done a, a great job of bouncing back after losing the first initial game. They've come out and after they seem to have a first look at a team, they seem to adjust very well. Um, you can credit Coach Adam Bohat for that as well. But huge game here against Arkansas Monticello to finish up the year on senior night. Should be a fun one. We have the starting lineups for both teams. We'll go ahead and run through those for you. Arkansas Monticello coming in off a loss on Thursday to Oklahoma Baptist, 77-74, the final score there. And they will start tough squad here today, averaging 84 points per game this season and 47% shooting from the field. That's third in the conference. They're also the number one rebounding team in the conference and the number two offensive rebounding team in the conference. First up, number one, senior guard Austin Hardy, 12.1 points per game, 4.8 rebounds per game. He's had seven straight and double figures, averaging 14.7 points per game over that time and knocking down 23s in that span as well. Number two, junior guard Jeremiah Alexander, four and a half points, two rebounds per game, did not play before January 30th. He's started the last six, or started six of the last nine contests. He did not play in the first matchup between these two teams. Number three, senior guard KJ Leisure, 18.7 points per game, is sixth in the conference, also averages 5.9 assists per game, which is fourth, and 4.1 rebounds per game. Is He is an excellent point guard, and the matchup between him and Micah Spate should be a dandy to watch this afternoon. Number 15, senior guard Marcus Gilbert, 14 points a game, 4.6 rebounds per game, also three assists per game. Gilbert did an excellent job defending Jonathan Dunn in Monticello. He still scored 22 points, but forced him into six turnovers, and he guarded Dunn the distance in that game. And number 23, senior forward Justin Slocum, 13 points a game, 6.9 rebounds per game. He's number three in the conference in offensive rebounds per game at 2.9 per game. For the Crimson Storm, it'll be an all-senior lineup plus junior one junior. First up, number three, senior guard Micah Spate, 17.2 points per game. 5.6 assists per game for Micah Spate this year. Number 22, senior guard Tyler Williams, 9.8 points per game, two rebounds per game for the senior transfer from Arkansas, Fort Smith. Number 25, senior guard Jonathan Dunn, number one in the conference in scoring, 26.2 points per game and 5.9 rebounds per game. 105 threes made this season is number one in the conference. Number 33, junior forward Ashton Charles, seven points per game, 3.3 rebounds per game. Second straight start after returning to action on Thursday against Southern Arkansas. It was his first, he was injured in that first contest at Arkansas Monticello earlier this year. And in the middle, number 34, senior forward Brady Mulkey, two and a half points, two rebounds per game this season. Uh, has not played the last two games due to uh, just mismatches inside, but he gets the start today here on Senior Day, and it should be a great one for Mulkey uh, going through the Senior Day festivities with 
his fellow cohort, Spate, Dunn, and Williams. And Reed, uh, just a really special class. Um, you can't say enough about what Micah and Jonathan have done for this program and the success that they've experienced over the last three years. Yeah, a truly legendary class that they've put together. Uh, and even the addition of Williams this year as a grad transfer has made a big impact. But the accomplishments that Spate and Dunn have had on this team and really the school can't really be put into words because they've just been so, so impactful. So it should be a fun last game for them here in the Sawyer Center, and I can't wait to see uh, what they do here and even in their careers after this year. This game does not have any impact, on, again, on the Crimson Storm side of things, but certainly a tough contest against a very athletic Weevils team. And the Crimson Storm obviously looking to take down Arkansas Monticello and finish the season on a high note and go into Bartlesville with a lot of momentum. Crimson Storm have won four in a row and eight of their last nine coming into today. Both teams on the court and Reed, a little benefit benefit for the Crimson Storm here on senior day is that the starting lineup doesn't really change that much by starting all seniors and Ashton Charles. Yeah, they've each each one of these guys have started a lot of games in their career, so nothing new to them, so they're experienced and they're ready to go. Slocum and Charles set to jump center circle. Thanks for joining us on the SNU Athletics YouTube stream and Crossover Radio Sports. We'll have full coverage for you in Bartlesville next week as Ashton Charles wins the tip and Micah Spate will bring it up for the Crimson Storm. SNU in their home whites, crimson numbers and lettering. And red trim down the side. Weevils in their traveling black. Weevils in script across the front. Green numbers, green lettering. Dunn hands to Williams on the right wing. He'll pull the trigger for a higher king three and knock it down. And a big quick start there for the Crimson Storm. The reason we've talked about often, SNU likes to start fast here at home. Yeah, they sure have. And great start for Williams who shooting the ball doesn't does what he does best. Alexander penetrating, bumped by Mulkey, but he gets through it no problem and lays it in with the left hand. Very big lineup here for Arkansas Monticello. Done, three-pointer on the way is short. Slocum tips the rebound out of bounds. It'll stay here with SNU. 18 on the shot clock. So a fresh 20 now. Ledger's 5'10", but Alexander and Hardy both 6'5", Slocum 6'7". Gilbert's 5'11", and Mulkey gets inside on the inbounds pass and lays it in for two. And SNU leads 5-2, a minute gone by in the first half. Leisure picks up his dribble between the circles, now gives Hardy left wing. Trying to dump it down low to Slocum and does. Slocum going to work on Mulkey. Banging in, finds Alexander on the baseline, blocked by Charles. Excellent defense there by Ash. And Spate coming the other way with it. Spate behind the Mulkey pick. Now gives it to him, top of the key, gets it back. Charles, top of the key, working on Hardy. Now gives it to Williams. Hardy switches on to Ty. Between the legs, dribbles. Step back three-pointer on the way is long. And Alexander the rebound. Gilbert will bring it up for the Weevils. Gilbert hit the game-winning shot in Monticello a season ago to spoil the end of the year for SNU. Slocum, give and go with Alexander, who got past Charles. Missed the wide-open layup. And SNU back the other way with it. Sweet around the corner, working on Hardy. Step back three-pointer on the way is good. And that draws some oohs and ahs from the crowd. And Kyle Tolan quickly to his bench with an 8-2 deficit. Denzel McDuffie to the scores table. Hardy left wing, he'll try to answer with a three-pointer of his own and splash it home. Austin Hardy, 41% from three-point range this year. He's knocked down 62, which is good for ninth in the conference. And Hardy has played extremely well of late. The last seven games, nearly 15 points per game and three three-pointers. Done. Wide open right wing three. That short Mulkey offensive rebound. Trapped, but a foul coming up from behind on Gilbert as he slapped down on Mulkey trying for the steal. So it'll be the first foul on Gilbert, first foul on the Weevils. 
Hardy will check out Denzel McDuffie into the game. McDuffie is a bundle of energy and a very athletic guy. 15 points, 11 rebounds, three steals in Monticello against the Crimson Storm. Inbounds comes to Dunn. Behind the Mulkey pick, drives to the baseline, bumped by Slocum, and he gets it in off the glass. First points of the game for Jonathan Dunn, and SNU leads 10-5. It was a low-scoring affair in the first matchup, 62-61 in overtime. These two teams come in averaging of near over 160 points combined. Loose ball on the deck. Alexander comes up with it, finds Gilbert. Open three in the corner is on the way in short. McDuffie tracks down the offensive rebound as he beat Charles to the basketball. Leisure with Dunn on him. Now McDuffie chased off the three-point line, steps inside for a long two, missed it, and Williams grabs the carom. Spate thought about the lob ahead to Charles, thought better of it. Crosses over on McDuffie. Fires it baseball style in the corner. Charles, three-pointer on the way. Off the back iron, no good. Charles yet to hit a three-pointer in his two games back. Still plenty of good athleticism from Charles shown in his return to action. A couple dunks against Southern Arkansas. Good to see that lift. McDuffie has it on the baseline. Lobs down low to Slocum and throws it out of bounds as Mulkey did a nice job on the switch not allowing Slocum to get there. Charles and Mulkey will check out. Nick Davis and Manny Dixon into the game for the Crimson Storm. Austin Hardy back in for Monticello as Alexander will take a seat. Monticello not going to go very deep today. Not a deep roster in general. Done on the right wing. Now top of the key. Gives it to Davis. Finds the cutting Dixon. Reverse layup is good. Andy Dixon, his first points of the game, and he has been feasting on the baseline of late. 12-5, Crimson Storm with the lead. Gilbert gives it to Slocum on the baseline, faces up on Davis. Across the lane, shot over the freshman is no good, and Dunn rips the rebound over the top of McDuffie. And he has it on the far side. Spinning, jumps into the lane, has it stripped away, and Hardy comes up with the miss. Leisure. Stepped on the sideline, going behind the back as Dixon challenged for the steal. And that'll take us to our first timeout on the court. 15-19 to go first half. Crimson Storm off and running here. 12-5, SNU with the lead. We'll be right back after this here on Crossover Radio Sports and the SNU Video Network. Welcome back to Bethany. SNU with a 12-5 lead right out of the gate, shooting 5 of 9 from the field. Monticello 2 of 7 from the field to start this one. Dunn trapped along the sideline, looking for help. Finds it in Davis. And SNU continues their weave up top. Spate working on Gilbert in the corner. Dixon now. Left wing Spate. Now back up top, Tyler Williams, wide open three on the way, is short. Manny Dixon, offensive rebound, puts it up, he's bumped, and he's fouled. Manny Dixon showing off the athleticism there. He's got four early, and he'll go to the line for free throws. That'll be the second foul on Marcus Gilbert. Gilbert can't believe the foul is on him. He said he wasn't even in the vicinity. The officials are not going to go look at it. So Dixon at the line for a free throw. And he missed it, which snaps a streak of 23 made field free throws in a row. I'll have everyone note that I did not jinx that by mentioning the streak before. Leisure, three-pointer on the way is long. And Williams high for the rebound. So that miss, not the announcer jinx. Dixon has it on the NCAA logo. Now gives to Williams. The two early fouls on Marcus Gilbert. He remains in the game for the Weevils. Davis diving to the basket. Traveled. 
before kicking it out to Dixon. Got a little bit too excited on that second step. SNU's feasted a little bit inside of late with that dive to the basket from Davis. A little bit too much there for Davis on the shuffle. Gilbert has it at the right elbow, driving on Dunn. It's trapped, pivoting, pivoting, and he traveled as he dragged his pivot foot stepping away. So a rough start here for Monticello. A couple of turnovers and two fouls on Gilbert, but most importantly, a 14-5 deficit. Dunn, top of the key. Guarded closely by McDuffie. He'll drive on him. Has it ripped away by McDuffie at the foul line. And now it's a one-on-two break. Spate there to knock it away from McDuffie. And Dunn, trailing the play, gets it back for SNU. Bounce pass in the corner. Dixon, Williams all the way to the bucket. Blocked by Kwame McBean at the rim, who's into the game for the first time. Wayne King is also in for... Monticello, and now a turnover from Leisure looking for McDuffie in the corner. Williams stepped in front of that. Very active so far is Tyler Williams here on this senior day. In the corner, Dixon fires up a three-pointer in and out, and it falls off the rim after a couple of bounces. SNU getting some great looks early and looking to really put the kibosh on the Weevils here in the early going. 13 minutes to play first half, 14 to five. Our score, Crimson Storm in the lead. Since Alexander came in the lineup, Wayne King has averaged just 5.7 minutes per game over his last seven games. He's averaging well over 20 before then. Gilbert lost it, beating Johnny on the spot. Missed the jumper, though. And Williams, another rebound for the Crimson Storm. Already his second. It's Spate between the circles. Looking for the screen from Davis. Goes right. Shut off there, triple team. Oh, and the defense left. Spate missed the shot as he turned around and found himself wide open. Leisure quickly up ahead to Gilbert. Dunn is back, pokes it away from Gilbert, and Dixon there for the save on the baseline. SNU extremely active defensively here as the Crimson Storm now would have four, six turnovers here in the early going. In the corner, Williams, run off the line by Gilbert. Step back, three-pointer on the way is gonna be short. Not a great look there from Williams. 14 to five, our score still. Weevils yet to get anything going against this SNU defense. McDuffie, bounce pass to McBean, rolling to the basket, turnaround hook over Davis, finds its way home. First points in nearly six minutes for the Weevils. Carlin Kenner and Mike Bauer at the scorer's table set to check in for SNU. Our next dead ball will be the under 12 timeout. Williams hits Dunn off the three-point curl. Davis inside, shuffled his feet again, stepping through. SNU bench incredulous on that one. Well, that'll take us to a timeout on the court. 11-16 to play first half, SNU leading 14-7. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. SNU leading 14 to seven, 11 16 to go first half. And Reed, the defensive pressure from the Crimson Storm has been smothering thus far. Yeah, we've seen that a number of times this year. The Crimson Storm come out hot on offense, and they're just really locking up on defense. And they've done that again today. Uh, maybe a little extra boost in intensity, knowing that it is Senior Day, but they've come out strong today. 
So Weevils basketball after the turnover. SNU with four turnovers themselves thus far. King holding in front of the SNU bench. Carlin Kenner and Mike Bauer into the game for the first time for SNU. Alexander on the right wing behind the McDuffie screen. Now Leisure behind the screen from McBean. Finds King. King drives baseline, pulls up over Kenner. High arcing jumper in and out, no good. McDuffie had the rebound, lost it. And a foul is going to be called on SNU. It's going to go on Dixon. Ashton Charles back in for Dixon, who sits down with his first foul. Leisure in the corner, King. Now between the circles. Behind the pick. Tried to hit McBean on the roll, but Spate got the deflection and done the steal. Done across the timeline. Working on McDuffie on the right wing. Between the legs. Spins away. Gets McDuffie to fly by. Is called for a carry. So another turnover for SNU. Marcus Gilbert back in for King. And Gilbert already with two fouls for the Weevils. Leisure holds up top. SNU now scoreless for about four and a half minutes. It still leads 14 to seven. Gilbert tried to sling at baseline to Leisure. It goes out of bounds. Another turnover for the Weevils. The SNU basketball. Charles inbounding with Spate in the backcourt. Leisure back there with him. Behind the screen, leaves it for Charles. Top of the key three on the way. Well off the marks. Done the offensive rebound. Puts it up too strong. Rebound fought for. It goes out of bounds off McBean. And it'll be SNU basketball. Reed, SNU falling on tough times a little bit offensively here, but their defense on the other end has kept things close, or excuse me, kept the Weevils at an arm's distance. Yeah, they've had some good looks. Just haven't had them to go down uh, as the game continues to go. If they keep producing great looks, they'll eventually fall down. Reset the shot clock to 12 here. Spate inbounding on the baseline, gets it into Charles. He'll drive baseline on Alexander all the way. The bucket tried to step it home. He was bumped from behind and got hung on the rim, but he'll go to the line for two free throws. Yes, and you now scoreless over the last five minutes. Charles at the line for two free throws, 66.7% there this year. Misses the first one, no good. Hardy back in, Alexander will take a seat. Charles gets the second one to crawl across the rim. First points for SNU in over five minutes. As SNU continues to struggle from the field after a very hot start. Pleasure behind a host of screens. Spate is equal to the task, chasing him down. McDuffie drives on Bauer, puts it up over Bauer, hard off the glass, and the foul will be going on Mike Bauer. First points for Denzel McDuffie. And he'll go to the line looking to complete the three-point play. He knocks down the free throw. And the lead is five for the Crimson Storm at 15 to 10. Bauer holding, gets it to Dunn at half court. 
The Wheels continue to flex defensively. Dunn, top of the key for three. Snaps the field goal drought for the Crimson Storm. And the lead back to eight. Slocum driving on Bauer, spins away from him, puts it up through contact, and the foul going on Mike Bauer. Quickly picks up two fouls here. So Slocum at the line looking to knock down a couple free throws here. Left the first one short, Slocum 63% at the line this season. Bauer will take a seat. Nick Davis back in for SNU. Slocum's second free throw is also no good, and Charles has the rebound for the Crimson Storm. Done. Working on McDuffie, all the way to the basket, leaves it for Davis, but a foul on the pass going against the Weevils. It's going to be on Slocum. That'll be his first. Fourth team foul on the Weevils here, 8.25 to go first half. 18 to 10, Crimson Storm leading this one. SNU jumped out to a 14 to five start. Davis tracks it down, but then lost it out of bounds as Slocum was harassing him out near midcourt. So Mon the sixth turnover for the Crimson Storm. Monticello has picked up their defensive intensity, causing a little bit of trouble for, for the Crimson Storm on the offensive end. So they're trying to get back in this game defensively. Both teams under 40% thus far from the field. McDuffie to the basket. Left-hand layup is good as he got just past Ashton Charles. So the lead six for the Crimson Storm, and they've led by as many as nine, 14 to five. Spate to the basket, floater in the middle of the paint is good as he held up just in front of Slocum. As the baseline cut from Kenner held Slocum off just enough to let him get free inside. Ledger to McDuffie up top, working on Charles. Pulls up just beyond the left elbow, it's long. Austin Hardy tracks down the offensive rebound. Gilbert dumps it down to Slocum, who got position on Davis, and he reverses it in for two. Lead back to six for SNU. Three offensive rebounds for Monticello. Micah Spade triggers up the right wing three and splashes it home. His second three-pointer of the game. And the lead back to nine for the Crimson Storm. Leisure in the paint. Floater over Davis is no good. Slocum offensive rebound lost it to Davis. Jump ball is called. And bodies go into the deck here. As Slocum had his arm tied up in there. And that'll take us to a timeout on the court. 6.56 to go here in the first half. SNU leading 23 to 14. We'll be right back after this here on the SNU Video and Radio Networks. Six fifty-six to go, first half. SNU leading twenty-three to fourteen over Arkansas Monticello. Weevils basketball after the alternating possession arrow on the jump ball gave it to the Weevils. 
And McDuffie trying to get free of Manny Dixon on the baseline draws the foul before the inbounds even comes in. Foul on Dixon is his second. Ashton Charles quickly off the bench. Dixon had just checked in out of the timeout. Got tied up in the chum along the baseline. So Leisure gets it in up top to McDuffie. Now Hardy with it. Doesn't like what he sees. He'll back it out. Gilbert with it on the left wing. Turns the corner. Now picks it up at the right elbow. Gives to Leisure. Spate's been in Leisure's grill all afternoon thus far. And an offensive foul is going to be called on Kwame McBean for the moving screen, trying to free up KJ Leisure. Leisure 0 for 2 from the field to start this one. First foul on McBean, fifth team foul on the Weevils. Spate will hold on the right side. Now gives to Williams between the circles. Working on Gilbert, who has those two personal fouls already. Entry pass to Davis at the elbow, and now a quick second foul going on Kwame McBean for the reach in. Monticello coach Kyle Tolan can't believe it. That'll be the sixth foul on the Weevils, so free throws the rest of the half for the Crimson Storm. And Slocum will quickly come back off the bench and get McBean out of there. Done. Guarded by McDuffie. He drives right. Tried to create some space, unable to do so. Back, tried to go back door to Charles, who faked Dunn out himself. And the pass goes away out of bounds. Seven turnovers now for the Crimson Storm here in the first half. Turnovers were an issue in Monticello. 17 of them for SNU the first time these two teams met. Let's see if that can be rectified as the game goes along. Gilbert driving baseline on Dunn. Bounce pass in the corner. Hardy, three on the way, is no good. Slocum had the rebound in his hand but lost it. Hardy flopped down, long lead pass up ahead for Charles. He's by himself with leisure, and he dunks it down with two hands. Great look ahead from Micah Spate. And SNU leads by 11, 25 to 14. Hardy in a, in a tra tra traffic, lost the basketball. Dunn coming the other way, three on two break, lead pass. Charles blocked from behind by McDuffie. Leisure. Now Hardy driving baseline, shut off by Williams, finds Slocum in the middle of the paint, pivots in amongst the trees and gets it to go over Nick Davis. What a defensive play on the break by Denzel McDuffie. Spate walks it across half court, five minutes to go first half. SNU with a nine point lead, 25-16. Top of the key, done with it. Between the legs, now uses the Davis pick. The hard double comes from Slocum. Now Spate with three on the clock. Going to have to create some space. He does. Three-pointer on the way over Leisure is no good. Nick Davis offensive rebound. Left-hand shot's no good. And the ball hit the stanchion, and it goes out of bounds. Didn't think Davis was the last to touch that at all. Looked like Hardy was the one who slapped it away from him from behind. The baseline official said it went off Davis last. And it'll be Monticello basketball. McDuffie and Leisure take a seat. King and Alexander back in as Kyle Tolan steals a few minutes for his thin group before the under four media timeout. Gilbert behind the Slocum pick. Slices down the lane. Williams knocked it away and got the steal. Spate with it. Lobs up ahead for Dunn. And he lays it in. A little deep for the dunk, but Dunn still got it to go in. It's two points either way, and SNU back up by 11. Hardy, top of the key, guarded by Williams, who's been very active defensively on this end today. Slocum backing down Davis, used the forearm shiver to create some space. Missed the shot, though, and Charles has the rebound. Cross-court pass from Spade. Williams driving baseline, bumped and fouled by King, and that'll be free throws for Tyler Williams out of the timeout. 3.49 to go first half. SNU with the lead, 27-16 over Arkansas Monticello. 
We'll be right back after this here on the SNU Video and Radio Networks. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. SNU leading by 11, 27, 16, 349 to play here in the first half in Bethany. Tyler Williams to the line for free throws. One and one opportunity here. That last foul on Wayne King, his first, but it was the seventh team foul. Williams knocks down the first. He's nine for nine his last two games. Four for four on Thursday night against Southern Arkansas. 73.5% for the season. And one more coming here for the senior. Arkansas Fort Smith transfer. In and out on the second. Hardy has the miss. But the lead is 12 for the Crimson Storm. 28 to 16. Leisure turning the corner. Hands to Hardy. Thought about the three, but Spate was right there. Alexander with it. Finds Leisure in the corner, but Spate closes out nicely. Slocum, screens off, done. Now Leisure back to Slocum. And a foul coming up on Nick Davis as Slocum do dove to the basket looking for the easy two. Be the second foul on Nick Davis. Nope, first foul on Nick Davis. So Slocum at the line for two free throws. He's 0 for 2 today. Knocks down that one. Monticello shooting 37% from the field today. One of four from three-point range. SNU 44% from the field. And Slocum goes two for two to offset the 0 for two, his first go-round. Biggest difference right now, 11 turnovers from Monticello, resulting in seven SNU points. Just to have prevented the Weevils from getting into any sort of rhythm offensively. Spate to the left wing. Goes behind the Davis pick, fires it right wing to Williams. All the way to the basket, reverse layup. Spins it home as he was hit by Slocum. A beautiful amount of English on that layup with the left hand. And Tyler Williams back to the line for a free throw here. Looking to push the lead to 13. Second foul on Slocum. So now two fouls on McBean, Gilbert, and Slocum for Monticello. And Williams hits the free throw. So the lead, 31 to 18. Hardy drives baseline, fadeaway jumper is in and falls in. Looked like it might pop out, but it did not. 31-20, our score. Davis diving to the basket, is hammered at the rim. And he'll go to the line for two. Foul's going to be on Hardy. That'll be his first. Davis knocks down the first free throw. One more coming for the big freshman. Left that one short. And then a foul is going to be called on Ashton Charles battling with McBean. They 
were battling for the loose ball. So 16 foul on the Crimson Storm. First on Charles, 2.38 to go before halftime. 32 to 20 our score. Leisure with it, top of the key. No points thus far for KJ Leisure, and just one assist as well. Three turnovers. Gilbert left wing. Leisure behind the McBean pick. Davis is there on the help, and but Leisure pulls up and scores from the left elbow his first basket of the game. And the lead is 10 for the Crimson Storm at 32-22. Spate works it across half court. Hands to Dunn. Behind the Davis pick, fires it down low to Davis, pass a little bit behind him. Davis fumbled it away. Alexander bounce pass ahead to Gilbert, and he lays it in for two. Marcus Gilbert. This news had a little bit of trouble on Davis slipping the screen, just unable to get the pass in the bread basket. Now eight turnovers for the Crimson Storm today. Williams top of the key, holding against Alexander. It's done off the curl. Gilbert is there. Steps inside the three-point line. Left that one short. And Alexander steps in to take the carom. He'll hand to Leisure and he'll walk it up with 1.20 to go before halftime. 32-24. SNU with the lead. They've led the entire way thus far. Leisure speeds down the lane. Has it ripped away from behind by Spate. Bounce pass ahead for Dunn. He got ahead of Gilbert. And he lays it in for two. Excellent defensive play by Micah Spate. Leisure looking at the official for some help. And an excellent lead pass from Spate to Dunn. And SNU back up by 10. We're under a minute to go first half here at the Sawyer Center. McBean on the left wing sends it back up top to Leisure. Behind the McBean pick, Leisure pulls up just inside the arc. Missed it. Dunn and Spate battle for it, but Dunn's the one who comes away with it. And Spate will walk it up, 35 seconds to go, about a 13 difference game to shot clock. Spate working on leisure here with 24, 10 on the shot clock. Trying to get it to Dunn, finally does with five. Dunn spins away, lost the basketball, and Hardy has it. Monticello will have the final shot and a timeout called by Kyle Tolan with 8.9 seconds to go in the half. 34-24 the score here. It'll be a 30-second timeout for the Weevils. Read a fascinating half. A lot of turnovers, 21 total turnovers between these two teams. They come in. Averaging just 24 for the game between them to themselves. Monticello's almost at their seat. Both teams almost at their season average for turnovers here in the first half. Yeah, I'm sure neither teams are pleased with how they've taken care of the ball in the first half. Uh, lots of improvement on that end, but SNU holds a 10-point lead, but I'm sure not, they're not thrilled with the outcome, so work to improve in, at halftime. Williams takes a seat for these last nine seconds as Carlin Kenner in for defense. Wayne King in as well for Arkansas Monticello. He's a three-point threat. 61 made three-pointers this year. Leisure behind the hardy pick. Great defense by Charles. Ball goes off Kenner's foot. Gilbert forces up a three-pointer at the buzzer. That's no good. And that's how the first half comes to a close here in Bethany. SNU with a 34-24 lead at the break. We'll step aside and take a quick timeout when we come back. We'll have first half stats and analysis as well as scores from across the conference. Get you ready for the second half of action here in Bethany. Again at halftime, SNU with the lead 34-24. We'll be back right after this here on the SNU Video and Radio Networks.
Welcome back to the Sawyer Center halftime here in Bethany. 34 to 24 our score as SNU leads Arkansas Monticello at the break. And read a great first half for the Crimson Storm uh, as far as defensively forcing 12 turnovers in the first half, nine points off those 12 turnovers for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, they did a nice job defensively uh, forcing turnovers and honestly playing uh, strong defense in the man-to-man, -man, but I think that they, uh, Monticello is going to come out with a little more energy, so they got to keep that up in the second half. SNU 46.5% from the field in the first half, just a shot under 50%, 4 of 13 from three-point range and 4 of 8 from the foul line, well below their season average of 73.5%. Arkansas Monticello, 41.7% from the field, one of five from three-point range, and three of five from the charity stripes. Rebounds even at 16 apiece. SNU, six offensive rebounds to four for Arkansas Monticello, leading to a 7-2 to two advantage in second chance points in the first half. SNU, 18-14 to 14 in points in the paint, and 4 nothing in fast break points as well. Very balanced effort from the Crimson Storm thus far, Reed, and something we've seen the past few games as well from SNU. Yeah, it's great to see other guys step up. We know Spate and Dunn can get it going in a hurry, but seeing Williams and Charles and Dixon step up as well, is uh, it's going to be a huge, huge jump from uh, some things that they've had in the past, and it'll really be good And as the GAC tournament continues to roll on to have those guys step up as well. Individually for SNU, nine points for Jonathan Dunn, three rebounds, two assists, three steals in the first half. Eight points for Micah Spate to go along with three rebounds and three assists. Micah averaging 10 assists over his last three games and had 12 on Thursday against Southern Arkansas. Seven points for Tyler Williams, who has been very active on the defensive end thus far today. Two steals for him. Three points for Ashton Charles, two points for Brady Mulkey. A single point for Nick Davis at the foul line and four points for Manny Dixon off the bench rounds out the scoring for SNU. For Arkansas, Monticello, six points for Joko. Justin Slocum leads the way. Five points and five rebounds along with two assists for Denzel McDuffie off the bench for Monticello. And then five points for Austin Hardy. He has the only made three-pointer of the game thus far for the Weevils. And then two points each for Marcus Gilbert. Jeremiah Alexander, KJ Leisure, and Kwame McBean for the Weevils. Not a, not a huge, it's still a huge day in Great American Conference play, but not as many wild scenarios on the men's side as we had on the women's side earlier today. But running through those final scores and everything here at halftime, it was Harding taking down Northwestern 75 to 74. A layup from Carissa Caples with 26 seconds remaining. The difference in that one. So Harding clinching a share of the Great American Conference title. Henderson State wins in East Central 73 to 58, holding the Tigers to six points in the fourth quarter after the Tigers had trimmed the lead significantly at the end of three. Southern Arkansas knocks off Oklahoma Baptist 93 to 63. The final score over in Shawnee. Southern Arkansas, the eighth seed in Bartlesville next week. It took overtime, but Southwestern finally came around and knocked off Arkansas Tech 94 to 84. The Bulldogs went 30 of 40 at the foul line, and Bethany Franks 29 points, 12 rebounds, six steals today for the Bulldogs in the win. Southeastern finished off Oklahoma Bab or excuse me, Washita Baptist rather, 76 to 55. So a three-way tie at the top as Katie Branham came off the bench to knock down six three-pointers and score 23 points for the Savage Storm. Talk about an outlier performance. So all three teams at 16 and six. And we'll see, don't have official standings yet from the conference office, but if everything played out as I think it did, I think the standings are as such on the women's side. I could be incorrect here. Communications Director Eric Moyer will have my head if I read things incorrectly, but you know what? He should have gotten these to me sooner. 
He laid out all 32 scenarios for us, and I think scenario number 11 is the winner today. So Southeastern will be the one seed, Harding the two seed, Southwestern the three seed, SNU the four seed, Henderson State will be five, Arkansas Monticello six, and Arkansas Tech seven. And again, Southern Arkansas was locked into the eighth coming into today, but that was the only one that was for a for sure. So those are your, what I believe to be your standings here today. And I think that is, yeah, that should be correct. Um, so Southeastern, Harding, Southwestern, SNU, Henderson State, Monticello, Tech, and Southern Arkansas, your eight teams in Bartlesville next week. And again, the schedule for Thursday in Monticello, or excuse me, in Bartlesville, the SNU men will play at 545 on Thursday the 5th, taking on Washita Baptist. We'll have full coverage for you beginning right before the or excuse me at 5:30 that'll be the start of the evening session on Thursday so we'll have full coverage for you there uh, starting at 5:30 here on crossover radio sports then the women will take on Henderson State on Friday also at 5:45 and again that'll be the first uh, game of the evening session so we will have coverage beginning for you for that game at 5:30. Then the semifinals will be on Saturday. Men will be in the morning or in the early afternoon. The women with the nightcap this year as the conference rotates the early times and the late times between the men and women each year. So the women in the late slots this year, the men in the early slots. So the men will play semifinals in the early afternoon. The women will play at night. And then the finals on Sunday men's final will be at 1 o'clock on Sunday and the women's final 20, 30 minutes after that the conclusion of that one so hopefully we will be there for you all through Sunday for both squads but we will have full coverage for you here on Crossover Radio Sports either way and we'll probably be looking at some other options as well for you as far as getting you the most coverage possible there in Bartlesville at the conference championships Scores on the men's side. These are second half scores. East Central 47, Henderson State 44, 13 minutes to go there. Halftime in Shawnee, 34 to 30. South, Southern Arkansas leading Oklahoma Baptist. Southern Arkansas looking for the season sweep of the Bison in that one. Late second half down in Durant. Not sure how they're so far along in this game. There's only six minutes left down in Durant. 74 to 70, Southeastern leading Washita Baptist. 76 70, rather. 14 30 to play in Alva. It's 43 42, Northwestern taking on Harding. And at halftime out in Weatherford, all the offense in this game 55 to 49, Arkansas Tech at the break. Just a reminder SNU and OBU, a 59 56 regulation. Uh, game earlier this year. So 55-49 Arkansas Tech and Southwestern. Uh, another game that doesn't, those last two games, not going to impact the seedings or the standings in any way, I believe. Might have a couple seeding implications just based on who beat who. Um, but none of those teams are in contention. Those are seed player or excuse me, teams 9 through 12 in the standings. So no issues there on that front. But Reed is both teams back out, getting loose for the second half here for our game. Uh, as SNU looking to clinch the Great American Conference title outright here this afternoon. Um, what are you looking for from the Crimson Storm here in the second half? Yeah, I say uh, stay with the defense. Defensive effort and intensity has been uh, unbelievable so far, holding Monticello to only 24 points. Uh, their leading scorer, KJ Lejure, with only two points. So look for him to maybe get it going a little bit in the second half and maybe apply some pressure on him as well. But overall, pretty solid defensive half, and uh, the shots are going to fall for SNU. And just move the ball around, and they should come out here with a win today. SNU, no real foul issues. Mike Bauer and Manny Dixon each picked up two coming off the bench. But no real issues besides that. <laughs> it's 
excuse me there, almost died. Yeah, you know, Reed, I'm I'm not you're you know you're from Washington State in, originally, so you're kind of a cooler weather guy yourself. The only good thing about warm weather, in my opinion, is uh, the fact that you can uh, get rid of germs easier. That that's, is true. I haven't, haven't thought about that. That's like the only good thing about warm weather. Had it dealt with a sinus infection last week on the road and wasn't fun earlier this week either, but finally getting through it. But the lingering effects, probably the worst part. But we're back to action here. No one died, and that's the important thing. Crimson Storm with the basketball starting the second half. Regular starting lineups on the court for both teams. Weevils come out in a 2-3 zone here. And Spate gets it up top to Williams. Dunn on the left wing, moves to the middle of the floor, leaves it back for Spate, penetrates inside, kick out. Dunn, right wing three on the way. That's perfect. Beautifully executed by the Crimson Storm out of the locker room. And a three-pointer from Dunn will be his third of the game. Excuse me, his second of the game, and the lead is 13 for SNU. Leisure finds himself wide open, top of the key. Missed it off the back iron for three. He's been unable to get going thus far. Credit to the Crimson Storm defense for that. Dunn driving to the baseline, and an offensive foul on the baseline is going to be called on Jonathan Dunn for wrapping his arm around McDuffie. Dunn can't believe it. Adam Bohach can't believe it either. First foul on Dunn. Didn't notice anything. Looked pretty pedestrian on the drive. Slocum drives past Davis all the way to the bucket and lays it in for two. So 37-26 our score. 18.45 to go in this one. Weevils quickly out of that 2-3 zone. That lasted one possession. Spate fires it down low to Davis with a no-look pass. And Davis rewards Spate's beautiful passing with a layup. And the Crimson Storm back up by 13. McDuffie on the right wing. Hits the curling Gilbert. Kicks it to Slocum on the baseline. Now back up top. McDuffie drives in. Puts it up over Charles. Charles might have gotten a piece of it. Spate has the rebound. And a foul is going to be called on McDuffie reaching in. Monticello bench looking for the jump ball. And it looked like McDuffie had kind of gotten in there pretty clean. But the official disagreed. The first foul on Denzel McDuffie and the first foul on the Weevils. Spate, top of the key with it. Now moves to the left side in front of the SNU bench. Swings it all the way cross court in the corner. Tyler Williams, three-pointer is long. Gilbert comes away with the rebound, and he's running. And he'll hold up there. Steps into a left-wing three-pointer himself as nobody came to guard him, and he knocks it down. His first three-pointer of the game, and the lead is 10 at 39-29. Charles with it up top. Now Williams right wing. Charles hands to Spate on the left wing, guarded by Alexander. Davis gives it back to Spate. Quick trigger for three. In and out, no good. Rebound fought for, and Leisure is the one who comes up with it for the Weevils. Into the front court. Lobs it down low for Slocum. Unable to get it, and it's knocked out of bounds by Slocum as he had done challenged for it. So another turnover for the Weevils. Now they're 13th of the game. And the Weevils came in averaging 13 and a half turnovers per game, so they're at their season average with 17 minutes to play. Dunn behind the Bauer pick. Swings it back to Spate. Three-pointer on the way is no good, but a foul coming on Denzel McDuffie, and that'll be three shots for Micah Spate and the second foul on Denzel McDuffie. Three free throws for Spate, 77% at the line this season. First one manages to find its way home. So 
Second one as well, and one more coming for the senior. And the third one finds its way home eventually. So Spate goes three for three. And the lead back to 13 at 42-29. Gilbert behind the Slocum pick. Unable to get it to him. Great rotation there by the Crimson Storm. McDuffie dumps it down low to Slocum, working on Bauer. Pulls it back out and lays it in for two. Kyle Tolan wanting a foul down low. Charles gives to Dunn up top. Dunn behind the back dribble. Step back three-pointer on the way is off no good. Dunn tracked his own rebound down. Loose ball on the deck. It'll be a jump ball, and it'll be Monticello basketball on the jump ball. Dunn knew immediately it was off to the right and was able to get there first, but Slocum knocked it away. Leisure between the circles with it. Gives to Gilbert on the right wing. He takes Dunn baseline. And an offensive foul called on Marcus Gilbert, clearing Jonathan Dunn out of the way. That'll be the third foul on Marcus Gilbert, and will take us to our first timeout of the second half. 15.56 to play here. SNU leading by 11, 42-31. We'll be right back after this here on Crossover Radio Sports and the SNU Video Network. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. 15.56 to play in the regular season. 42-31 SNU leads. That last foul on Marcus Gilbert, his third. He remains out there right now for the Weevils. Three team fouls on Arkansas Monticello here in the second half. So Crimson Storm basketball out of the timeout. Spate has it on the right wing now as he drifts over to the SNU bench. Cross the top of the key, dives down the lane, kick out. Mike Bauer, wide open right wing three is off to the right, no good. And Leisure has the miss. Quickly into the front court goes the speedy senior. And tried to go behind the back. Charles nearly ripped it away. Leisure forced it up to McDuffie from his backside. McDuffie into Charles. Charles did a nice job saying vertical. Slocum the offensive rebound and puts it in. Slocum has been impressive. He's active on both ends, and he's made some tough finishes down low. A nine point lead for SNU, 15 10 to go. And Slocum forces the steal on Spate. Done from behind. Tried to force the miss, and he did as Slocum missed it right at the rim. Behind the back dribble from Dunn. All the way down the lane, lays it up, left it short. Ashton Charles with the offensive rebound, though. He's. Reach-in foul is going to go on Austin Hardy trying to tie up Ashton Charles and a bailout there for the Crimson Storm. So missed wide open layups on both ends there. It'll be SNU basketball with a fresh 20 on the clock. Slocum will check out Kwame McBean back in the game. Done. Off the inbounds pass. McDuffie with a great challenge. Dunn was forced to pass. Resets behind the three-point line and knocks it down. Heady play by Dunn, getting rid of it before he hit the ground and a 
Nice challenge on both shots by McDuffie. Again, an athletic player, McDuffie. Does a little bit of everything. Hardy trying to answer from the left wing, and he does for Monticello. Manny Dixon checks in for Ashton Charles as the ball got away from the baseline. Monticello two of three from three-point range here in the second half. SNU two of six and three of seven from the field overall. In the corner, Dixon run off the line by Hardy. Find Spade up top. Williams with it now. Drives into the paint around McBean. Missed the shot. McBean might have gotten a hand on it. And the rebound deflected out of bounds by Monticello. It'll be SNU basketball with seven on the clock. I don't know Kwame McBean, but he does have a nice name. I'll agree with that one. Spate inbounding on the baseline. Sends it back up top to Dunn. McDuffie is there. And a arm bar foul is going to be called on McDuffie. That'll be his third Fifth team foul on Monticello. And Kyle Tolan not pleased over there on the Monticello bench. So a fresh 20 on the clock for SNU. Dunn trapped in the corner there. Leisure and McDuffie are there. Now Leisure switches on to Dunn. Behind the Davis pick, steps into a right wing three. That's good, Jonathan Dunn starting to get cooking here in the second half. The lead is 12, and Jonathan Dunn with 15 now, three of seven from deep. Leisure hands to Hardy. Now Gilbert with it, looking to dump it down low to McBean. Faces up on Davis, takes him baseline, and a foul on Davis, and the basket counts from Kwame McBean. McBean moved the young freshman out of the way a little bit. He was able to get in there and score the bucket. And he's looking to respond to Dunn's three with a three-point play of his own. Brady Mulkey off the bench will check in for Davis. Second foul on Nick as he heads to the bench. Bean's free throw is no good. And Dixon wards off Hardy just long enough to get that rebound. So the lead is 10, same as it was at half. 48-38, our score. Monticello is starting to find things offensively. They're 6 of 10 in the second half. Williams, baseline pass to Dixon is fumbled out of bounds. 12th turnover for the Crimson Storm in this one. So both teams above their season average in turnovers thus far. And Leisure will bring it up. Jeremiah Alexander in the game now for McDuffie. Hardy picked up his dribble on the left wing. Now finds Alexander top of the key. Gilbert working on Dunn. Moves to the top of the key. Dixon's on him. Gilbert looking for help. Gets it to Leisure in the corner. Spate nearly had the steal. Leisure steps inside. Is fouled by Spate on the jump shot. And Leisure will go to the line for two free throws. This is for the personal foul. So Leisure's been looking for a foul on the jump shot multiple times today. But finally got one there. 86% foul shooter this season. Hits the first. And one more coming here with 12.55 to play. Foul on Spate was his first in the third team foul. Leisure goes two for two. 48-40 our score. SNU has led the distance thus far. 42 to 29, their biggest lead at 13. Dixon, top of the key, drives right past Hardy all the way to the basket, who swats it off his leg, out of bounds. Turnover, Crimson Storm. Great defensive play there by Austin Hardy. Leisure will bring it across half court. Sends it to Alexander on the right wing. Hands to Hardy up top, guarded by Dixon. Dumped down on the baseline to McBean. Backing down Mulkey. Sends it back up top, Hardy. Quick trigger for three. Top of the key is no good, but a foul is called on Manny Dixon. 
And Austin Hardy will go to the line for three free throws. A foul on Dixon is his third. And the fourth team foul on the Crimson Storm. Hardy's first free throw is up and good. He'll have two more. 78.6% foul shooter this season. Second one is long off the back iron. Ashton Charles and Carlin Kenner will check in. Williams and Dixon out. It's a final in Durant. Southeastern knocks off Washita 91-77. And Hardy goes two for three at the line. Six point game, 48-42. So SNU needing a win to avoid a shared conference title here today. Dunn behind the Mulkey pick, the double team comes. Gives it to him in the corner, Kenner. Back to Mulkey, floater in the lane is good. An excellent give and go between Kenner and Mulkey. Some beautiful offense there and the lead back to eight. Hardy crosses over on Kenner, leads it for Alexander outside. Not a threat to shoot from deep, just 0 for 2 from three this season. Hardy has it, now Gilbert with it. Dumps it down low to McBean. Backing down Mulkey. Spins baseline. Charles a little bit late coming over to help. And McBean spins it home for two. Charles top of the key with it. Now in the corner, Mulkey. Top of the key, Spate. Had it blocked by Alexander coming over the top and a three on two break. Leisure flying down court. Alexander has it ripped away by Spate. McBean gets it back on the loose ball. Hook shot is good. Spate nearly had it long enough to force a tie up. But it was a loose ball and the lead down to four here for the Crimson Storm with 11 minutes to play. It's a 10-2 run for Monticello over the last three minutes. Mulkey, kick out. Charles, three-pointer on the way from the corner. It's good! Charles! Ashton Charles, first three-pointer since returning on Thursday, and it's a huge one for the Crimson Storm as the lead balloons back to seven with ten and a half to play. McBean faces up on Mulkey. Now the back down starts. Senior on senior. Fakes, gets it back out. Gilbert chased off the line by Dunn. Step back three-pointer is on the way. And good, a big answer from Marcus Gilbert. Lead back to four. Big shot there from Gilbert. We're halfway home in the second half. Monticello making SNU earn every bit of this one. Charles rises for another three. It's very long. And Hardy has the miss. Here comes Leisure along the far sideline. Leaves it for Hardy, wide open, top of the key for three. It's short, and Micah Spate goes and grabs that rebound. Spate into the front court, all the way to the baseline, bumped, kicks it out, done. Leisure is there, though. Fires it down low, Kenner on the baseline, bumped by Gilbert. He puts it up and scores! And the foul on Marcus Gilbert! And that'll finally take us to the under 12 media timeout. 9.32 to play, SNU 55, Arkansas Monticello 49, and Carlin Kinner at the foul line when we come back after this.
Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. SNU clinging to a six-point lead with nine and a half minutes to play. Carlin Kenner at the line to complete a three-point play. And Reed, just the growth of Kenner this season, evidenced by no better play than that. Very similar situation at the end of overtime. Jonathan Dunn threw a pass to Kenner on the baseline, fumbled it out of bounds, but this time he held on to it, finished through contact, and completes the three-point play to push the lead back to seven. Pretty cool moment there for the freshman. He's matched up on the senior Leisure right now. Now Hardy with it, picks up his dribble on the right wing, gives it back to Leisure, dumps it down to Slocum, deflected out of bounds by Kenner. Nick Davis quickly off the bench back in to deal with Justin Slocum. So Alexander will inbound in front of the Monticello bench. 14 on the shot clock. Sends it up top to Hardy. Now McDuffie with it on the left wing, guarded by Charles. And Leisure behind the Slocum pick. Picks it up at the top of the key, fires it down low to Slocum. Quick off his feet. Gets the shot off the glass to go. And a quick bounce there from Justin Slocum. Found himself a couple feet outside the lane, but was able to get it down quick. Spate with it. Working on Leisure now, sends it up top to Dunn. Dunn drives by McDuffie, all the way to the bucket. A lot of contact. Lee missed the shot. But the foul is going to go on Monticello. It's going to be on McDuffie. And that's going to be number four on Denzel McDuffie. So four fouls each. So four on McDuffie and four on Gilbert. Two of the best defenders on this Monticello team. And free throws the rest of the way for SNU as that was the seventh team foul. Jonathan Dunn at the line for the first time today. Knocks down the first free throw. And one more coming for Dunn. Second one's also good. So the lead is seven once again. And SNU's led by as many as 13 this afternoon. Slocum on the baseline going against Davis. Nice give and go with McDuffie, but he lost it. And amongst the trees, pump fakes on Charles. Missed the shot and tipped out of bounds by Slocum. And Mike Bauer will check in for Nick Davis. SNU now healthy-ish. Mo Wilson still out with, he's done for the year. And as healthy as they're going to be at this point of the season. But we're using the bigs liberally now that Ashton Charles is back in the lineup. Done. Behind the Charles pick. Pulls up for three left wing. Left it short. And Slocum has the rebound. Eight minutes to play here in Bethany. 58-51 the score. Hardy finds himself wide open left wing three. And nearly airballed it. Dunn tracks down the rebound in front of the Monticello bench. Quickly up ahead, Kenner. Wide open corner three from the freshman, and he rattled it in. Great look ahead from Dunn, and great confident stroke from the freshman, Carlin Kenner. And the lead back to 10, seven and a half minutes to go. Slocum down low, lost the basketball. Alexander with it, now Leisure. Wide open three, no one challenged him, and he knocked it down. A little bit of a scramble drill there. And Reed SNU has defended well, but a lot of these shots coming off breakdowns for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, right when it looks like SNU is going to pull away with a little bit of a streak, uh, Monticello fights right back and is keeping it close. Monticello shooting 61% in the second half. They're 4 of 7 from three-point range. Charles to answer from the top of the key, left it short. And Leisure with the rebound coming the other way for the Weevils. McDuffie with it. Looking for help, now bounces it down low to Slocum. Slocum working on Bauer. Across the lane, missed the shot, Charles the rebound. Charles has done great work on the glass today. And Spate will walk it up across half court. Kenner guarded by Hardy at the top of the key. Passes a little bit behind Spate as it went through his hand. Leisure leaves it for the trailing Alexander. Runs over Micah Spate. Offensive foul. Jeremiah Alexander 
That'll take us to a timeout on the court as Denzel McDuffie down on the other end on the far baseline. Looks like he's holding that right arm. So the foul on Alexander, his second. McDuffie down on the far baseline. We'll go ahead and head to break here on the SNU Video and Radio Network. We'll be back after this. Six eighteen to play here in the 2019-2020 regular season. SNU leading Arkansas Monticello 61-54 here at the Sawyer Center. Luke McConnell here alongside with Reed Roloffs. Reed, we've had a tight contest. Arkansas Monticello getting going offensively here in the second half, shooting nearly 60%. They've knocked down four three-pointers. SNU just 47% for the half, but have knocked down five of their own to keep things pretty even across the scoring column in the second half. Yeah, it's been a pretty even second half. Uh, both teams playing well offensively, um, kind of a switch from what was happening in the first half. So should be an entertaining finish and a very good game. Henderson State leading East Central by four, 138 to play over in Ada. Oklahoma Baptist up two on Southern Arkansas at the under eight timeout. Northwestern up 10 on Harding, 2.30 to play, and Arkansas Tech up by 7 on Southwestern. Those last two games do not impact the seeding or standings for next weekend's tournament in Bartlesville. Southeastern has already won today, knocking off Washita Baptist. They're waiting to see if Monticello can help them out and let them do some delayed net cutting in Durant. SNU looking to prevent that here with 6.08 to play. Bauer, hands to Spate, turns the corner on McBean, leaves it to the trailing Dixon, and he lays it in. And hung on the rim for a couple seconds there. But it went through two points either way. Gilbert is back in with those four fouls for Monticello. McBean trying to hit Alexander on the cut. It's not there. Bounces it out to Gilbert. And he'll hold behind the McBean pick, diving down the lane. Floater in the lane off the glass and good. Marcus Gilbert got free there. He's now into double figures with 10. Lead back to seven. Five and a half minutes to play. Dunn on the left wing with it. Waiting for the pick from Bauer. Gives it to Bauer on the slip. And a travel is called on Bauer as he did not release the basketball on the pass. Probably a good thing that the travel was called. It could have been an offensive foul on him as well as Hardy stepped over to take the charge. The first meeting between these two teams, SNU's first real clutch time game this season. They responded well. We'll see if they res how they respond here. If this one gets tight, tur late. <laughs> Alexander in the corner, guarded by Dunn. Backing him down, across the lane. Fadeaway jumper is no good, and Dunn snatches the ball off the rim. SNU in no hurry here, 4.50 to play as Spate walks it across half court. Spate drifts to the left wing, goes behind the Bauer pick, bumped and fouled by McBean. That'll be the third foul on Kwame McBean. And Micah Spate to the line for a one and one opportunity here as that was the ninth team foul on the Weevils. McBean and Alexander check out. McDuffie and Slocum back in. Charles in for SNU, and Bauer takes a seat. Shooting one and one. So one and one here for Micah. It's three for three today. 
knocks down the first. He'll get rewarded with one more with 4.35 to play. SNU is able to hang on here. We'll have the full video of the net cutting, and Spate rattles that second one in. Pretty sure he's hit the rim about 10 times cumulatively on his free throws today, but they've all counted. 65-56 our score. Leisure gives to Gilbert, guarded by Dunn. Thought about the three, instead sends it back up top to Hardy. Williams is on him. Now Leisure, left wing, guarded by Spate, behind the Slocum pick. Cut off there. McDuffie, he'll try his hand at a three-pointer and knock down the wide open look. McDuffie just 24% from three-point range this season, but give pretty much anybody a wide open look like that, and they're apt to knock it down. So the lead back down to six as we're under four minutes to play. Spate so waits for the double team from Slocum to go away before moving left. Trying to get it to Dunn. McDuffie denying that well. Spate. Uses the Charles screen to answer from three from the left wing. Great screen from Ashton Charles and a quick trigger from Micah Spate. He's now six, or excuse me, three for six from three-point range. Hardy, 18-foot jumper from the baseline is good in response. And the Weevils continue to make things happen offensively. 61% from the field in the second half. They're five of eight from three-point range. Another good screen from Charles. Spate finds some space. Top of the key. Three on the way. Off the back iron. No good. Hits the top of the backboard. Comes back in. Charles puts it up off the iron. No good. But he'll go to the line for two free throws. Fortunate bounce for SNU that it didn't go over the backboard. Just hit the top of the backboard. And that's going to take us to our final media timeout with 3.08 to play. SNU leading by seven, 68 to 61. We'll take our final timeout and be back after this here on the SNU Video and Radio Networks. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. 3.08 to play here in Bethany. SNU holding on to a 68-61 lead over Arkansas Monticello, who has been fantastic here in the second half. 61% from the field. Ashton Charles at the line for two free throws out of the timeout. He's one for two today and rattles this first one off. No good. And one more coming for the junior. Charles goes one for two. The lead is eight. And Monticello working back the other way here. Leisure bumped and fouled by Charles, and he comes up hopping a little bit. Looks to be okay. Just his second, fifth team foul on the Crimson Storm. And the Weevils will inbound up top. Leisure enters it down to Slocum, quick turn. And a jump ball is gonna be called as Ashton Charles got his hands on that one. Kyle Tolan acting like he was gonna take his suit coat off. He was quite displeased with that call. Either way, SNU basketball, 2.45 to play. Done with it, top of the key. The double team's there, McDuffie. Dunn nearly lost the dribble, now gets it back. Charles, right wing, nearly traveled, instead lost it off his foot, out of bounds. And 
And here come the Weevils. 16th turnover for the Crimson Storm today. Pleasure to Gilbert in the corner. He'll fire up a three-pointer from in front of the bench. Missed it. Hardy the offensive rebound. Gets Charles in the air and lays it in for two. Six-point game, 2-10 to play. SNU, a veteran bunch. Monticello, a very veteran bunch as well with Gilbert and Leisure. Slocum and Hardy transfers, but also seniors. A lot of basketball has been played by the guys on this court right now. Dunn turns the corner, and a foul going to be called on Monticello. We'll see who it's on. It's going to be on Slocum. Just his third foul. So Jonathan Dunn at the line for two free throws here with 1.51 to play. First free throw is pure. Makes it a three possession game with 1.51 to go. And one more free throw coming. He knocked down both of them. Carlin Kenner will check in for Ty Williams as we go offense for defense here. Done with 22 points, seven rebounds, four assists, three steals. An all-around game for an all-around guy. Leisure flying around the corner, kicking the corner Gilbert. Not a great pass. He drives in. Scoop play up is no good. Foul is going to be called on the floor on the Crimson Storm. Going on Dunn. Just his second foul. Fresh 20 on the clock, 137 to play. It's an eight-point game, 71-63. Leisure gets it into McDuffie, guarded by Dixon. Now Gilbert with it. Gilbert steps around Charles, nearly traveled with it. McDuffie between the legs, spins on Dixon, pump fakes into the body of Dixon, got it to go. Defense by Dixon not fouling, but a nice move by Denzel McDuffie. 120 to play, two-possession game, 71-65. And a timeout called by SNU. Timeout, secondary three. We'll stretch this to a full timeout. So we will take that as well. 117 to play. SNU with the ball and a six-point lead. We'll be right back after this. One seventeen to play, SNU with the basketball and a 71-65 lead over Arkansas Monticello. Crimson Storm with 24 on the shot clock coming out of the timeout. Tyler Williams back on the court for the Crimson Storm out of the break. Again, we go offense for defense here. Dixon, the trigger man, gets it in up top to Ashton Charles. They'll hand to Spate. Double team quickly comes, and a foul is going to be called on Slocum. Kyle Tolan upset. Looked a little bit more upset with Slocum more than the officials on that one. There's still plenty of time for Monticello to play out the possession. So Micah Spade at the line looking to extend this to a three possession game with at least one of these two free throws. Left the first one short and it did not clamber over the front of the rim this time. Williams out, Kenner in for SNU. Alexander out and McDuffie in for Monticello. Monticello has played well offensively down the stretch, but they have fouled SNU a little too many times, putting them on the line and giving them three points. 
Spate goes one for two. The lead is seven. Three possession game. Leisure will let the ball walk up a little bit before picking it up. And the clock did not start correctly. Officials at the scorer's table. Checking with the clock operator to get everything situated here. The officials talking about it here. We try to get this all sorted out. So finally, I think we're going to have 112 on the clock and 29 on the shot clock. So 112 on the clock here. And a fresh 30 for Monticello. But now Micah Spate will be in the backcourt to force Leisure to pick up the basketball early. And here we go. Leisure quickly into the front court behind the Slocum screen. Unable to get it to him. Now McDuffie dumps it down low to Slocum. Right into Ashton Charles who fouls him. And Slocum puts in the hook shot. Third foul on Charles. Slocum to the line looking to complete the three-point play. Williams will check in for Kenner. Alexander at the scores table to check in for Slocum. Slocum two for four at the line today. He's got a team high 16 points. Missed that one. Dunn has the rebound. He'll hand to Spate. And Spate will work it up with leisure on his hip. Gets it across half court, no problem. Under a minute to play, five point game. Leisure poking away at it. Spate equal to the task. 10 on the shot clock as Spate gets it to the top of the key. McDuffie comes swiping. Spate, no look pass to Charles, who fumbled it out of bounds. Charles was wide open underneath, but just couldn't bring in the pass. 37.9 seconds to go. Timeout Monticello. A 30-second timeout here. They read a five-point game. SNU obviously just needs a stop or two, and this one's over. But Monticello has made life difficult in the second half for the Crimson Storm. Stops have been hard to come by. Uh, Monticello's come out of halftime on fire, scoring 43 points here in the second half, uh, not going away easy. So they're going to try to either, what, what do you think would be the best strategy here? Go for the three or go for the quick two? Uh, probably speed-wise and what Slocum's been able to do, I would imagine Monticello will go for the quick two and maybe just try to lengthen this a little bit. They've got the three-point shooters to lengthen this game. Leisure's made 74, Hardy 62. King has made 61 and Gilbert's made 53. So they've got plenty of shooters to push the game along here. It's Gilbert who's going to bring it up. Sets a heart screen on Dunn in the back. Gilbert spins in and is called for traveling. Spates laughing. Dunn grabbing that right shoulder just a little bit. A hard screen from Slocum. And Gilbert went spinning for that quick too, but... Picked up his pivot foot as he was traveling or going across the lane. So SNU basketball, 32.1 seconds to go. The entry pass comes to Charles and the quick foul on Alexander as now the Weevils are forced to foul. So Ashton Charles to the line, four free throws. He's two for four there today. Five rebounds, two blocks, along with seven points. 
SNU looking to finish this one off. Again, if SNU is able to hold on, we'll have the full net cutting ceremony right afterwards. We'll sign off on the radio side after some quick post game thoughts, but we'll leave the video rolling for you. Justin Slocum and Carlin Kenner report back to To get the full effect of three straight conference titles here in the GAC. Charles goes two for two. The lead is seven, and Nick Davis will check in for him. So a three-possession game now for the Crimson Storm with 31 seconds to play, 74-67. Leisure into the front court. Quickly, floater is short, done, has the rebound. Looking for help, and he's going to be fouled. Going to be one of Slocum or Leisure. It's going to be Leisure. And Jonathan Dunn will head to the line to ice this one for the Crimson Storm with 17 seconds to play. And Reed, who else would you rather have at the line, both for sentimentality and for this particular moment? Great way to finish out the regular season and great momentum going into the GAC tournament. Dunn hits the first one. And one more coming here for the senior. Dunn gets the second one to fall. He's got 24. The lead is nine. And that should just about do it. Leisure leaves it for Gilbert, diving all the way to the bucket. And he's going to be put to the deck by Davis by, with the body. That foul on Davis, going to be his third. Charles and Williams off the bench for free throw shooting purposes. Davis and Kenner will check out. So Gilbert at the line, 4-2 free throws, 78% this season. His first trip today, and he misses that one. And he'll have one more with 11.3 seconds to go. Goes one for two. Monticello will continue to extend full court pressure. Inbounds comes to Williams and the foul on Alexander. Be his fourth and Williams to the line for free throws with 10.2 seconds to go. Monticello not going to go quietly into that good night. But it appears here with 10 seconds to go that they will be vanquished even though they did put up a great fight in that second half. Williams misses the first. But one more coming. Both teams over 50% from the field in the second half. Knocked down a combined 11 three-pointers. Williams goes one for two. 77-68 the score. Leisure quickly in the front court, forces up a 30-foot three-pointer. It's off the back iron, no good. And Jonathan Dunn snares the rebound, and that will do it. A three-peat for the Crimson Storm as Southern Nazarene polishes off their third consecutive outright Great American Conference title to finish off Senior Day in style here this evening. 77 to 68, the final score today at the Sawyer Center. A perfect day for SNU as the women and men both send their seniors out in style and the men bring out the scissors, bring out the ladders. It's time to cut some nets here at the Sawyer Center. And Reed, a great season continues for the Crimson Storm as now we look ahead to postseason play and all that that brings. Uh, just a fantastic year for SNU. And there were moments early in the year where we weren't quite sure that this was going to happen tonight. But SNU has been on just an extreme roll. 
14 of their last 16 have been wins. They've won nine of 10 and five in a row now heading into Bartlesville. And this team getting healthy and coming together completely at the right time. Yeah, they've, they've really come together and really have gotten better each day by day. And really credit these guys and Coach Bohat for just another incredible season that they've been able to put together. And let me just tell you, they're not done. They're not done here. So it's going to be an exciting couple of weeks. So Carson Burr getting up there first, and we'll run through the whole roster here, getting up there to cut the nets here in Bethany. And going over the final numbers here for you, 47.9% for SNU for the game, 10 of 28 from three-point range, and 21 of 28 from the foul line. Arkansas Monticello into the game at 50%, 6 of 15 from three-point range, and 8 of 14 from the foul line. And SNU overcame a 57% second half for Arkansas Monticello, including 5 of 10 from three-point range. But Reed, SNU was equal to the task in the second half, 17 of 20 from the foul line in the second 20 minutes. Yeah, really gritty, gritty win for SNU. Uh, came through from the free throw line, as you mentioned, 17 for 20 in the second half. And that's how you close out ball games when teams are going to be aggressive and put you on the line. They're going to make you earn it, and SNU did just that. SNU won the battle of the boards 31-26 and held Arkansas Monticello to just six offensive rebounds that came in, averaging 13 per game this season. So a great job on the boards there. SNU did finish with 17 turnovers for the second time against Monticello, but able to overcome those and come out with the win. SNU a 9-1 edge in fast break points and a 16 to 12 edge in points off turnovers, turning those 16 Monticello turnovers into those points. And Monticello did bully SNU in the paint a little bit, 36 to 26 in the paint. And SNU 11 second chance points to just six for the Weevils. We continue going through the net cutting and just a cool sight to see and a cool thing to be a part of individually for John for SNU Jonathan Dunn leading the way on senior day 24 points 10 rebounds along with four assists and three steals he was fantastic today despite uh, heavy pressure across the board from Arkansas Monticello who defended extremely well throughout the day Micah Spate 17 points three of seven from three five rebounds six assists for the senior point guard. And Reed, it's always cool to see your top players come through when they when you need them the most. And they did in the second half, knocking down several three-pointers between them. Yeah, they're such clutch basketball players. They've been through this. They're experienced. And they know exactly what it takes to come through in the end and really get the job done. Once again, they've done it here tonight. Balanced effort from the rest of the roster. Nine points, five rebounds, two blocks for Ashton Charles. Eight points for Ty Williams. Four points for Brady Mulkey, six for Carlin Kenner, three for Nick Davis, and six for Manny Dixon off the bench. SNU led wire to wire this afternoon and claiming their third consecutive outright conference championship. And we'll head to Bartlesville as the one seed and we'll take on Washita Baptist on Thursday at 5.45 p.m. there at Bruin Fieldhouse. Justin Slocum individually for Monticello. Slocum, 16 points, five rebounds. 14 points for Austin Hardy. 11 points for Marcus Gilbert. Two, 10 points for Denzel McDuffie along with five rebounds and three assists. KJ Leisure, just seven points today on two of eight shooting. SNU did an excellent job defending him today. Five rebounds, three assists as well for Leisure. And then two points for Jeremiah Alexander rounding out the scoring for the Weevils. Read final thoughts here this afternoon. Again, we'll stay with the video stream here on the SNU Athletics YouTube channel to keep that going. Uh, so you can see the entirety of the net cutting here at the Sawyer Center. Um, but we'll sign off here on the radio side here momentarily. But Reed, going into Bartlesville, it seems like there's nothing this team can't do at this point. Uh, not just in Bartlesville, but in the tournament beyond. Yeah, they've shown they can win in a multitude of ways, whether it's uh, hitting clutch shots, finishing uh, around the rim, and just playing great defense. They can do it 
just about every way. So they're going to be really tough to beat come tournament time. And if I'm the opposing team, I wouldn't want to play SNU right about now. So the Crimsons will run through the final scores across the conference real quick. Oklahoma Baptist does end up pulling out the win over Southern Arkansas, 69 to 63. Henderson State in overtime is looks like they are going to knock off East Central 99 to 94. That one has just gone final. Southeastern won today 91-77. Northwestern 78, Harding 68. Arkansas Tech now down three at Southwestern with 134 to play, 93 to 90. So still some drama in that particular game, but again will not impact. Uh, seeding or championships or anything like that. So, as far as I will see if we can get an update on the standing or on the women's side, or excuse me, men's side for seeding as those finals come through. Plenty of things still to be sorted out as we get through again SNU and Washita locked into that 1-8 but two through seven a little bit more up in the air as we come through the final stretch and told scenario five is the winner at this point for the men's side Travis Beach. so Looks like, so SNU will be the one seed, obviously. Southeastern will be the two seed. Henderson State, the three seed. Oklahoma Baptist, the four seed. East Central, five. Monticello, six. Southern Arkansas, ten, and or seven. And Washita will be the eight seed. So that'll be your one through eight in Bartlesville next weekend. And again, we'll have full coverage for you here on Crossover Radio Sports for the entire tournament. As long as SNU is around, we will be there for you and have full coverage pre and post, as well as all the action from Bruin Fieldhouse. Should be a great weekend. And Reed, it's been a lot of fun doing these with you. And uh, your final thoughts here today. Yeah, really uh, impressive performance from SNU. And I just can't wait to see what they do in the tournament and the rest of the season. And really fun team to watch and a bunch of great guys. So really looking forward to the ending. Adam and Bo Hodge finishing off the net. Actually leaving the last bits for his two seniors, Jonathan Dunn and Micah Spade. Oh, they're going to climb the ladder together. Well, that spotters everywhere, please. Jonathan gets the first clip. And Micah going to finish it off and pull the net down. And Michael Spade. Oh, we're going to leave one more here. Who's going to get the final snip? Jonathan getting right back up there to get the last one. And there's the net. Three straight championships in the Great American Conference for the Crimson Storm. For everyone here at SNU Athletics, this is Luke McConnell saying good evening from the Sawyer Center, and we'll see you next week in Bartlesville. Ladies and gentlemen, your great American Conference champion.